Well, I took the plunge and I bought myself a curve tester off of uh, Amazon, and this is what I got. Now, yours will not come with these two labels on here. Uh, I put those on there later after I discovered how this thing works. The uh, problem is, uh, this is the basic model, right? It only has two inputs and, of course, your X, Y output. Some of these have uh, more inputs. I don't know what they're used for. Just a more complicated device. So this is the basic one. It did not come with an instruction manual, lamentably. And I don't read Chinese. <laughs> uh, but they, they didn't even give you a manual in Chinese, so go there. Um, it also did not come with a power supply, so figure that one out. And it didn't tell you what kind of voltage or connector you need for the power supply. But uh, I figured all that out by taking some careful measurements and uh, doing a little research. Dug into the uh, circuit board and played with it. Found out how all the adjustments work. This is, uh, this is your 24 volt input. It's about uh, 53 milliamps at 24 volts. Uh, I bought a power supply off of Amazon also. bought this thing. It'll do an amp and a half. A regulated 24 volt output. Uh, you don't need an amp and a half. Uh, they do make some smaller ones. Uh, but it does have to have uh, regulated output. So on the back I also wrote this nomenclature. The pin is positive. The size is 5.5 .5 by 2.1. So that's the connector you need. And it did not identify the uh, X and Y uh, channel 1, channel 2, so I had to figure that one out uh, on my own. Now this thing has some uh, sine wave output that you can use uh, uh, outside of the XY mode. And uh, if you press uh, this button, it'll give you 3.8 sine cycle per second, 22 cycles, 210, 14, 36 cycle per second. It gives you a good range. Now these two inputs right here this is your main input A but uh, if you're going to do some comparisons uh, it also gives you this B input and if you press this button it'll pulse between the two and uh, this little control knob right here will uh, allow you to change the pulse rate of the relay inside and that pulse rate goes between from about one cycle per second to about 2.8 cycles per second. So that's, that's, uh, that's how it swaps back and forth. Um, if you take this thing apart, you void the warranty, which uh, I did. And when you pull the label off, it says void. <laughs> and that stays on there. You can't get that off without dissolving it. On the back, there's no instruction. There's just nothing there. As I said, I put these labels on here myself uh, as I worked with it to, uh, so I could remind myself later on of what I'm dealing with. Okay, um, we'll hook it up and show you how it works, and then we'll take it apart and show you how the calibration works. And by the way, you do get a couple of cables, uh, a couple of probes, and you get a couple of uh, B and C cables. So you don't have to buy those. That's nice. Okay. Um, I'm connected up to the scope. And uh, right now there's nothing connected to the inputs on the tester. So this is what you get. You're going to get a sine wave out. <clears throat> There's your... Uh, low frequency... As your next frequency up, that one's uh, 22, there's uh, 210, and there's your 1436. Um, I've got some wobble in the scope, don't worry about it. Uh, I changed the capacitors in this, uh, electrolytic capacitors in this scope a few years ago. 
I don't think they were quality capacitors and I probably need to change some of them, of them again so I've got some AC wobble in the pattern here uh, not coming out of the tester <clears throat> okay so that's what you got uh, with nothing attached to the inputs but if I short this is what you get open close and if you go back and forth with the uh, uh, pulsing the A and B inputs uh, each one has the same thing uh, so I'll hit the AB pulse back and forth no change but what happens is there's B there's A B A and for ground the other one it'll be right the opposite okay so that's what you got uh, not being in the XY mode we're just looking at the plain signal that comes out of it when you go to XY mode then you start uh, using it as a curve tester so let's do that all right I'm in XY mode now and uh, this is your horizontal line which will adjust with uh, channel 1 uh, I've adjusted it to 8 radicals and then if I short Now it goes to the vertical and channel 2 will we'll do that one. So I've adjusted uh, the horizontal line and the vertical line to 8 radicals each. Now when this thing came in I did not uh, turn it on because I didn't know what voltage to put on it. <clears throat> um, but I had to play with it a little bit so uh, I actually uh, changed the adjustments inside so I I'm not positive, but I think it came in calibrated this way. Eight radicals, horizontal, eight radicals, vertical. If you use a power supply that's less than 24 volts, uh, you will not have the same output. Uh, you will have uh, less voltage to deal with. So it has to have the 24 volt power source. Okay. I see I'm getting some uh, light bulbs in there. Let's see if I can get the light bulb out. I don't know if I can or not. Yeah, I think I did. Now you can see the camera and you can see me. <laughs> okay. Um, what else can I say about that? Well, uh, let's hook some up, something up to uh, the uh, channel A and we'll see if it'll do the curve test. All right, um, this is a small diode, just a simple, plain, small diode, and uh, there's the signal I got out of it. Uh, turn it around, and that's what you get out of it. Okay, so we know the curve works. Uh, so you can test your transistors, zeners, and all kind of stuff like that. I'm going to go back to the uh, out of the XY mode, and I'm going to go back to the uh, sine wave. Now I'm going to hook up the same diode. You see that pattern? Notes that the peaks go up. I'm going to reverse the diode. Note that the peaks go down. So let's hook up uh, both inputs with similar diodes. Here I have only one input hooked up, only one diode, and I'm alternating channel 1, channel 2 and you can see your timing uh, what bothers me is I don't have the same amplitude on these peaks right here but I don't think that's a problem because it is reading a diode so let's put uh, let's put it back like it was and we'll do channel 1 channel 2 
uh, at least uh, input A, input B, I should say, and swap back and forth. Here's input A, input B, back and forth. One diode is facing one way on the first input. Uh, the second diode is facing the other way on the other input. We'll do a transistor. I'm connected to uh, an FET. This is, uh, I'm connected to the drain and the source. And uh, the gate is open. If I touch the gate, Look what happens. That gate is extremely high impedance, extremely sensitive. I know that's a good FET. If I can touch the gate and get this kind of reaction out of it, and if I leave it for a moment, it'll kind of drift. That's right, the gate will drift into some kind of a state. That's a good FET. Let's try a resistor. And this should give me a horizontal, uh, I mean not a horizontal, but uh, a diagonal signal right there. So, you can test all kinds of things with it. Uh, as I say, I took this one apart and played with the calibration and then had to calibrate it back after I got it all messed up. I'm going to take it apart and show you what I found inside and uh, if you have to recalibrate or you want to verify the calibration I'll show you how to do it. To calibrate uh, you can hook up to the scope with your cables. Um, your input should be open. You don't need anything on the input. Go back and look at your sine wave uh, not in the XY mode. Okay. Um, you got four adjustments in here. This is an amplitude adjustment for one channel. That's channel two. This is the amplitude adjustment for channel one. This trimmer right here adjusts the height of the sine wave. Uh, to eliminate clipping so between uh, this control between this control and this control you have to go back and forth uh, to continue to get your uh, eight graticals sine wave and use this to adjust your clipping you can go back and forth until that's correct this potentiometer right here adjusts the up and down the balance so if it clips up up here and clips down here and you're in between with no clipping you know it's correct so aim for eight radicals eliminate your clipping here and your balance using this trimmer right here that's it one two three four adjustments and that's all there is to it now that's while using 24 volts for your power supply. If you have a power supply less than that, uh, it's not going to be exactly the same. Okay, um, I took a chance in taking this apart and I played with these adjustments to figure out what they were. So, what I'm telling you right now is what I discovered after I got through playing with the adjustments, and I believe this is probably the way it came in from the factory. Eight grads, eight grads, and uh, that's it. Uh, I'm going to look for any other extra, extra information and I'll be back with a conclusion. I did a schematic and uh, some nomenclature to help me remember how to use this thing <laughs> in case I don't use it for a couple of years and I'm old and I forget. Uh, up top. It mentioned that the tester did not come with a power supply or instruction manual and you have to purchase your own. There's um, the power supply that I purchased. 
if you can see it there I hope you can take a picture of this if you like there are the tester outside and inside those are your adjustments and we're going to move over a little bit and uh, we'll read all the little notes okay for your preliminary calibration set the scope to channel 1 no connection to the inputs look at the sine wave on the scope adjust trimmer 1 to eliminate the peak clipping if you go up with that uh, trimmer, you'll see peaking begin. Go back off a little bit to eliminate it. Adjust tr trimmer 2 to balance the sine wave up and down this way so that you're in between the clipping. And repeat that several times if you need to in order to get it right. Calibrate XY. You go to your uh, XY mode. Uh, connect X to channel 1, Y to channel 2 on your scope, no connection, scope in XY mode, set both channels to 1 volt per grid, uh, set your scope so that you're looking at channel 1, adjust your pot number 1 to 8 grads horizontal line, connect your input A to COM, in other words you're shorting out and put A and then adjust your pot number 2 to 8 grads vertical line. So the uh, 8 grads horizontal, 8 grads vertical. Double check. If the power supply is less than 24 volts, the above calibration will suffer. You need a 24 volt power supply and needs to be regulated. Make sure your power supply reach 24 volts unconnected that will prove to you that it's regulated, unconnected. Uh, some power supplies are not regulated and they may show like 35 volts until you connect it and then your voltage will go down some but you need to read 24 volts unconnected to anything to be sure that it is has a regulated output otherwise you may blow the tester. Uh, don't trust the label on the supply no matter what it says as long as <laughs> just trust your voltmeter if the uh, scope image shakes a lot that's because the power supply is not good DC it may be a cheap power supply that's not well uh, uh, not well built and may not have a good uh, DC out also check all your solder connections to eliminate any potential intermittent problems I found that a lot of this Chinese stuff it may be it may look soldered quite well on the circuit boards but um, um, if you uh, wiggle anything around you may have some problems so I would check all the through pins just just give it a good look over with a magnifying glass now on this particular one I thought my BNC cable was uh, bad as it connected to the uh, uh, to the uh, to the tracer but kind of find out it wasn't the BNC cable it was the connection inside that uh, needed to be re uh, retouched with its soldering so I retouched um, all these connections and uh, eliminated that problem so don't give up uh, be a good tech uh, learn from your mistakes whatever it takes and there's the title to this page there's the model number HW210K now you may find some other model numbers online now, like I say there are a variety of these things around this one is very basic alright guys I don't know what else to tell you if you buy one of these things uh, I hope it works right out of the box if it doesn't here's how the calibration and all that works if you need to do some extra soldering, go for it. Be a good tech. Uh, we need more good techs. 
All right, I'm signing off. Uh, you can, if you have questions, you can uh, you can add them in the comment, and I'll uh, see if I can come up with the right answer for you. Thanks for watching.